Alright guys, it's Tim from Capes and Scows. We're going to do our second episode of drawing and today we're going to tackle a drawing subject that a lot of people struggle with at first and that's drawing from life, drawing realistic looking things. Um, I, Hello. I like to uh, draw people when they're sitting around watching TV. Um, I like to, I think the most important thing you could do is uh, draw from photographs. I think that's a good way to learn uh, the human body and where it goes and how the whole shape thing breaks down. So today, what we're going to do is we're going to draw one of my favorite wrestlers of all time from this photograph, because I just met the guy and he was amazing, Jushin Thunder Liger from ROH and New Japan Wrestling. He is 52, I believe, and he still goes better than some of the young guys. So. That's what we're going to do. We're going to draw that based off of this photo. So, I know what you're saying. It's a good realistic idea, but when you look at this photo of him, you don't see eyes, you don't, you barely see his mouth. But I think that's good for this starting exercise. Because as you can see, you're going to draw the circle of the head, you're going to draw the outline of the body, the fist, everything. This is basic, in a way. Sure, it's got ornate details, but don't worry about that. We're going to get through it. So... Let's see here. What's the best way to do this so you can see it? There probably isn't one. <laughs> uh, yeah. All right, we're going to draw it, and we're going to see what happens. It's worth pointing out today, our drawing is sponsored by Starfall Webcomic, which you can find at Starfall Comic on Twitter, and KB Photography, which you can find at KBIZZL311. So check them out for all your photography needs. Also, capesandscalespodcast.com, and you can find us on Patreon. Give us a dollar. We'll love you forever. That's all it costs for our undying love. So, to start this drawing, and I'm going to keep bringing it in occasionally here, okay? What we're going to do, we're gonna st I, I always prefer to start with the head and work my way out. So, I'm going to draw a basic circle. And... The way his head is, is you're kind of focused on the mask, but there's also, his head's actually bigger because of the hair. So, what you may want to do is just kind of keep in mind that there's this extra area around his head. Okay? Now we're going to come down with the neck, his chest, and this is probably really light, but that's okay. He has his fist here. See, it's a circle. His other fist is about here. Right? And like I said, we're not committed to any of these lines yet. It's just circles and rectangles at this point. Right? Yeah, you got a shoulder up here. That's a circle. Connect it there. He's kind of got his back showing here, his shoulder back area. You've got kind of that, even though you can't see it. That's where that would be come down here we got more circular kind of shapes to get that in there this would be another circle right like that we're just gonna kind of do a basic chest area for now um, he's got his belt about here a little bit of an ass showing right 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 not just flat people right and there you go this is your your basic figure here. So, there you go. Alright? Give you an idea. Right? Okay, so let's keep going. Um, I'm going to do the head now. We're kind of going to breeze through this, so try to pick out what you can. The eyes are normally towards the center. Normally an eye would be probably like in this area, but because of the way his mask is, his eyes actually take up a huge chunk. But what you keep in mind is, somebody's face is roughly five eyes wide. But this is angled a bit, so don't be fooled by that. You kind of have to adjust. So this would be smaller, this would be a little bigger. But it's not a big deal. So if we were to put his actual face in, it would loosely be this. Okay. So what we know from the picture is his chin is going to end about here, right? 
His mouth is about here. His nose at the bottom is here. At the top is about here. And then you have your eyes roughly here. Okay? So we're going to turn that into this. Here we go. So we're going to start with the eye. The eyes, as far as the mask, don't cross over the nose. And they kind of just make this little arch shape here. Okay, and now we do something similar on the other side. Okay, see I've already made mistakes. It's okay to make mistakes. And if you look at the photo, you'll see that this part here is all the way to the edge. So this eye is going to end pretty much at the edge there. So if we're paying attention, which I'm trying my darndest to do, <laughs> it would be pretty bad to say draw from life and then don't look at the damn picture. So if you take a gander, we have the basic idea here. If you're not a wrestling fan, uh, he's not a luchador per se, he's from Japan. Luchador usually refers to Mexican wrestling. Um, but, I mean, it's a similar style. Mexico and Japan have some similarities. A lot of the wrestlers, you know, go to both. We have these uh, spike doodads. Now, the nose comes into a spike at the tip here and goes back into the eyes. You guys see what I'm doing here? Right? Come on up. Now these go above the mask line for his head where his head actually would be. And like I said, none of this is quite exact yet you're gonna work on it but you kinda gotta see like that it needs to be more in the center so this should probably actually be a little more over here right we'll fix that with the eraser mm -hmm. you guys want me to draw specific things feel free to let me know I am on Twitter at mad underscore dog underscore Tim. Okay, so that is roughly the top part there. Now we get into this intricate part on his mask up at the top. Another fun thing, when you're doing faces, actual faces, not this mask stuff, um, a lot of times using your finger to smudge the uh, lead can give you really good uh, different degrees of shading when you're trying to do the face. Because the face can be pretty intricate. And you definitely need to show shade and shadow, and that's a good way of doing it. <clears throat> So we are we are on our way here. <clears throat> Very intricate uh, costume here. Wrestling is a lot of fun, man. Especially beyond the WWE stuff, Ring of Honor, New Japan, TNA. If you can kind of, you know, suspend your disbelief, there's a lot of fun out there. <clears throat> So if we go back to the eyes, we got to make like a mesh. So let's do the outline of the eye. Right, on both sides here. Uh, you'll notice this comes almost all the way to the edge for here. Okay, and for the mesh, just for now, we're just going to do 
basic lines. Doesn't have to be perfect. I got dogs barking. It's always dogs barking. That's why we don't record here too often. <laughs> That's okay. You gotta do what you gotta do, right? And, you know, these aren't exact. They look pretty good. They're pretty well distanced. Gives you an idea, right? You'll get better at these things the more you do it. You'll just be making lines all day long. Okay. If you guys like this, when it's all said and done, which I hope you do, there's a specific wrestler... I actually screwed that up because of a signature on that picture. There's a specific wrestler you want me to try, and we can do more photorealistic stuff later on. Let me know. I am more than willing. Now, a big thing with the mask is to keep it relatively in line. They're going to be... If you were wearing this mask, it would be pretty even on your face. Um, these things are made to move with him when he wrestles. So, you know, this pointing one direction off his face and this kind of flopping forward is not, you know, an impossibility. So keep that in mind as well. Kind of even that off a bit. And <clears throat> this goes to here. Underneath, kind of comes around like so. Mm -hmm. Just following what I'm seeing, you know, different lines. And like I said, this isn't going to be perfectly exact, it's just trying to have some fun. When you're doing hair, don't do every strand of hair, just get an approximate approximation of what you're trying to do, if I could talk, <laughs> right? <clears throat> Notice <clears throat> his hair kind of comes down but gets hidden by his hand, so it's going to come back out around here. And then he has his hair kind of like so. Really loose lines, because he kind of has, um, it's not his real hair on the mask, it's like messy pretend dreadlock kind of thing going on. So there's that. And now he has horns that come out from the side, bigger horns, which are awesome, by the way. So let's get them in here. Kind of trying that, trying to get the right size, the right feel. Um, they're kind of hidden by the hair. So And Jushin Liger's been around for years. Like I said, uh, he's wrestled for WCW, he's wrestled for WWE, um, he wrestled at NXT kind of recent, he's been at Ring of Honor for a while now. Uh, he's wrestled, he wrestles for New Japan. He's been part of Super J Cup, he's been part of everything. If you can do it in wrestling, he's done it. Except maybe be the World Heavyweight Champion here in America. But he's one of the few back in the day at least, that were from another country and really made a big important splash here in America. Kind of taking a little too many liberties in this. It's not as photorealistic as I would have liked. But you can see, like, now I can kind of adjust that now that I have the horn in. I don't think anybody's going to beat you up if it's not perfect. This is going to be a little tough because he actually signed over this horn when I met him. Sweet guy, by the way. So I'm going to kind of guess this because I actually can't see part of it. And like I said, I, w I would recommend that you work photorealistic. You know? Um, don't be afraid to draw over lines. Draw light, but you got to be able to see it at the same time. So right now... This looks pretty different in a way, <clears throat> but you can also see that I have a lot of the correct spacing for everything. 
and when I add color and shading and everything else, it should get pretty close. Um, and these things will look cool when I do shading. Maybe I'll save that for a different lesson so I can show you how to make it actually look like this, despite it not being, you know, the right colors and everything. So we're pretty close for the hands. Some people have a real hard time with hands. Don't worry about that. We're going to take our time with hands. You know, you got to kind of just work to your strengths. Don't worry about it. You'll get there. Keep it very basic for now. Right? Thumb underneath. He kind of has a little bit of his wrist shown. And then a lot more of his hand underneath. It's the angle of it. It kind of looks weird now. Trust me, it's fine. So I drew this line, but that was more just to show you the shape. Um, just get his hand on in here. Um, if you want to talk wrestling with me, I'm always available, like I said, at mad underscore dog underscore Tim. Um, I have such an eclectic mix of favorite wrestlers. Uh, depending on what we're talking about, you know, what era of wrestling, you know. Um, I loved, when I was younger, I loved the Million Dollar Man, Ted DiBiase. He was pro he's probably my favorite legend. I did get to meet him, it was a fun story. Met him with my son, who I used to have a replica of the Million Dollar Bell. Not a fancy one, but like a kid's one that was everywhere. Uh, when I was a single man, it was up on the fridge, kind of like a shrine, because why not? And uh, I gave it to my son, and my wife eventually gave it away, donated it, whatever she did, because she's evil. And uh, when we met him, he's like, hey, do you remember that belt? We had the belt, because he had the belt with him. I'm like, yeah, I remember the belt. I love that belt. He's like, yeah, you love that belt. I go, yeah, yeah, I love that belt. He's like, yeah, mom threw it away. You were so mad. I go, yeah, I was mad. <laughs> the whole time, the million dollar man's kind of chuckling at us. Although he's a, he's a pastor. He's not a very, it's funny, he's... Um, He's not this weird heel that everybody would imagine him to be. Uh, he's actually a sweetheart of a man as well. So Most most of them are. I mean, I've met a handful of wrestlers. I, I'm not going to say I've been blessed to meet too many of them. But, you know, I've met a lot of the guys I want to meet. And uh, most of them are just really thankful to be able to make a living wrestling. Especially, and you know what's interesting is a lot of people are like, Oh, you're not in the WWE, you're not going to make it isn't true anymore, um, the WWE is not the end-all, be-all. I mean, yes, TNA has money issues, but uh, Ring of Honor does really well, New Japan does really well. You can do a bunch of indie bookings and make a slew of money. So, not that money is everything, but money is important, and if you're putting your body on the line and, you know, you're deteriorating your health and whatnot, you should probably get paid for it. All right, so we have a circle here in the center for his kind of a, he has a, a design on his chest. Try to do this as best I can. Like I said, we're at a more basic stage right here. We don't have to worry about everything being quite exact, but basically the point of this lesson, <clears throat> like you'll notice on a lot of my lessons, the point is to teach you what you may be lacking, what you may not be thinking of. I've watched so many drawing videos from people who, maybe I draw better than them, maybe I actually do, but you know what, the way they think about things really uh, helps a lot on what I'm doing. And then I become a much better drawer as well. Much better artist. Drawer. I'm a better drawer. Pretty cool. I've already screwed this up quite a bit, actually. <laughs> so, 
but I'm sure we can save it. So let me know if there's other, if you like this and you want me to do other luchadors or whatever, I, I'm more than willing to. I love wrestling. I'm not against it. I could be the guy that just draws wrestlers on YouTube. Not a problem. I think one of my favorite uh, Mexican luchadors uh, always was um, Psychosis. Psychosis was really great. Uh, he went through ECW. I'm a big ECW mark, original ECW, because we're from right here near Philly. Um, went to the arena a bunch of times. Got to go to the arena again for Ring of Honor, which is where I met Liger. And uh, I tell you, that place is, is so nice now. It was a real cesspool before, <laughs> and uh, now it's pretty good. enjoyed Ultimo Dragon when he was around. I know people got to see him a little bit later in his career in WWE. Uh, his WCW stuff was so good. His feud with Malenko was was top-notch. Dean Malenko doesn't get enough credit pretty much ever. Dean Malenko was amazing, but as far as talking luchadors, uh, I loved him. He was great. like we're getting somewhere people people. I think we got there. I think this is enough for the moment. I'll clean it up and I'll put the final version of it up at the end here. But here you go. Jushin Thunder Liger. Check him out. Ring of Honor, New Japan. I'm trying to get everything in the frame. Oh god. What? But not too shabby, right? I'll clean it up. I'll make it look pretty. I don't think I'm gonna color it. I may shade it though. And uh, keep your eyes peeled. Maybe on our Patreon, I'll give the picture away to a lucky somebody. So hey, you could be a somebody. Good for you. All right, and of course, remember capesandscalespodcast.com. You can search for us on Patreon. Today is sponsored by Starfall Webcomic and KB Photography. They're both on Twitter at Starfall Comic and at KBiz, K-B-I-Z-Z-L, 311 is where you find him, and he does really great photography, so make sure you get on that. All right, thank you guys for sticking with me, uh, trying this new kind of awkward uh, uh, angle for everything. I'm going to figure out the best way to do this outside of just getting a GoPro. Maybe I'll just go get a GoPro. But for now, thank you, and thank you for checking us out.